Welcome to the revolution. Today we'll discuss the unthinkable, a presentation without bullet points. In other words, slides that accompany your spoken words, not repeat them. Specifically, you'll learn why you should never, never, never read from a slide. Why words plus visuals, any graphic or image, convey more than words alone. Why it should take your audience only three to five seconds to get a slide's point. Why the ability to give effective presentations gives you an advantage in the workplace. So, let's get started talking about presentations. Why the scary font? Because presentations is just another name for public speaking, Americans' number one fear. And yet we all know that today's corporate environment is focused on teams, including remote teams. And that means presentations are as common as cubicle walls. How important are presentations today? See this guy here? His name is Bill Lane. He was a speechwriter for Jack Welch for 20 years. In his book, Jacked Up, Lane wrote, Leaders who weren't superlative presenters simply could not be leaders in Jack Welch's GE. Do you honestly think that presentation skills aren't also of equal importance in other companies, like, say, yours? And what will happen to your career when you become known as an effective presenter? Here's someone who can help, Nancy Duarte. She heads one of the leading presentation design and coaching companies in the world. Her clients include Apple, Boeing, Coke and Pepsi, Nike, Oracle, TED Talks, and many more. I urge you to check out her website, Duarte.com, where you can take online workshops and get free information and coaching. She has an excellent YouTube channel that you should check out, where she also gives out a lot of good techniques for free. Here are a few of her key takeaways. Duarte says that you should think of your slides as digital scenery. Interesting phrase. In other words, a slide should be a visual accompaniment to what you say, not a transcript of what you say. The ideal presentation is a 50-50 affair. The visuals on the slide are incomplete without the words you speak. Likewise, the words you speak are incomplete without the visuals. Because your audience needs both for a complete understanding, the audience pays attention to both. Second, Duarte says to write your presentation first, then design the slides. If you try to do both at the same time, you treat slides as documents because you're trying to write a draft on a slide. The result? Text-heavy slides. When it comes to design, please consider limiting your use of bullets and the excessive text that usually comes with them. If you do use bullets, follow the 5x5 five five rule. No more than 5 bullets per slide. No more than 1 bullet slide for every 5 slides. No more than 1 line per bullet. And no more than 7 to 9 words per line. Now notice that I didn't use any bullets. They're usually visual clutter. If I wanted to make each point stand out, I'd use text boxes like these. There are four scientific reasons to limit your use of bullet points. 1. The redundancy effect. The human brain can't process simultaneous identical inputs. The brain either shuts one off or shuts down and stops paying attention. Sound familiar? 2. The picture superiority effect. Science tells us that ideas and information are better remembered when presented as visuals accompanied by words, instead of words alone. A picture really is worth a thousand words. After three days, we remember only 10% of what someone said, but 65% if they presented the info with a visual. 3. Language Processing Speed We can read at least twice as fast as we can listen. We read and process about 350 words per minute, but we hear and process only 175 words a minute. This means your audience will finish reading your slide silently while you're reading it out loud. Of course they stop listening to you. They're done, waiting on you. 4. Limits on working memory Human memory capacity is optimized to two to four chunks of information, with three being optimal. That's why phone numbers and social security numbers are divided into three chunks. So a slide filled with bullets and text overloads working memory. How well can the audience listen to you with their working memory overflowing? Now this raises a serious question. What do you do? 
Answer, build visual presentations using the 50-50 rule. Make the slide a visual accompaniment to the words coming from you, the presenter. Because the slide doesn't have to be a summary of the words you're speaking, the slide can carry half the load visually. It's the 50-50 principle. The visuals aren't complete without the words. The words aren't complete without the visuals. It helps to think in terms of a billboard. The ones you see along our roads and highways. Here's what billboard artists know that we must also learn. You've got three seconds. That's how long the average motorist looks at a billboard. Your slides are the billboards of your presentation. You must limit text on them and rely on visuals to complete the message, just like billboards do. You see, this is not a slide. What is it then? It's a slidegement, a word coined by Gar Reynolds to describe that weird, neither fish nor fowl thing that aspires to be a slide, but is visually broken. This takes us back to Nancy Duarte's advice. First, write your document. Then, and only then, design your slides. Let's analyze what's wrong with this one. How can we turn the slide into a real slide? It has three common problems. Use of a white background, an effective use of bullets, and an effective clip art. In step one, we'll deal with background. Avoid white backgrounds. Why? When projected, their glare gives them a harsh and unfinished look. A good graphic designer can make a white background work, but we want quick and easy. Your goal is to choose a background that complements the tone and message of the presentation. Let's take another look at our slide What's the overall message? The presenter wants the client to know how great they are to work with. Now, what kind of background would convey that? Hmm, how about an image of the company doing exactly that? interacting with the customer to provide great service. Now, once you have a clean, not-too-busy image, you need to make it into a background. Techniques for doing this can be found in PowerPoint's Picture Correction Tool and the Artistic Effects Tool. You can lighten the image, recolor it, wash it out, blur it, etc. Here you see I blurred it so that other elements would stand out. Now for Step 2. The dreaded bullet points. Let's return to the original sin. Too much text all at once. The audience will either turn away or read ahead and not pay attention to you. Look at all those words. Now go in there and find only the key words, the minimum text that conveys the kernel of the idea. Now make each idea into its own text box so that it stands out clearly. And don't crowd. Increase the size of the box and or point size. With so few words, you've got plenty of room to make sure they stand out. Also consider using the animation pane to give each text box a fly-in animation. Bringing in each point as you talk about it helps viewers to focus just on it. Another trick is to add transparency to the text boxes. Right-click on the text box and choose Format Shape. Then adjust transparency to about 25%. The background image now peeks through and the presentation blends together more. And now on to step three, clip art, which is very difficult to use well because it can give the presentation an amateurish, childlike feel. Your best bet is icons. Icons are less intrusive, more editable, and still serve the primary function of breaking up text drawing readers in, and reinforcing message. For the slide we're working on, it was easy to find icons to represent the points being made. Innovation, caring, including, supporting, experience, awards. Now we ease in the company logo to seal the deal. Okay, let's compare. Notice how your eyes avoid the confusion on the left and seek the clarity on the right. And now you know the reasons why. If you examine other before-after comparisons, you'll see the same principles at play. Clarity is achieved by reducing the amount of text, selecting key words or numbers, and accentuating them and only them visually. The key is that you, the presenter, decide what to emphasize, then do so visually. 
As you can see from these before-afters by Gar Reynolds, even data-heavy financial slides can benefit from this approach. Decide what text is essential to show on the screen, emphasize that and only that, then let your words do the rest. That's the 50-50 rule.